So you've decided to take the leap and study at Deakin University. Well firstly, congratulations! You've done well to get this far in your education, so why not reward yourself with keeping the transition as smooth as possible? Here at Deakin we have become very reliant on digital technologies to not only teach, but research and even submit assignments. Fortunately, because of this, the interface that Deakin offers to students is quite intuitive. What I hope to do is briefly show you how to use Deakin Sync and the cloud so that you get the most out of your studies, as you will be spending a lot of time in these two areas. I will go over how to quickly set up Deacon Sync so it is there and ready for you to use whenever you need it. I will also go through the various elements offered by Deacon Sync, from accessing the library catalogue to checking your enrolment. I will also briefly go over the cloud and what you'll need to know with respect to your units. I will divide these into short video tutorials that way you can choose what you would like to focus on at your leisure. As always, I encourage you to explore the site beyond what I show you, as sometimes the best way to learn in the digital age is simply by doing. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Deacon Sync so it's ready for you when you need it. So let's get straight into it. First and foremost, you're going to need to activate your Deacon IT account. This will then allow you to access Deacon Sync later. As I am a current student, I cannot show you the step-by-step -step process, but I can show you how to get there. If you follow this top link here, you can also click it in the description of this video, it will take you to this web page here. Once the web page loads, of course, you'll need to input your credentials and then click continue. Once you click continue, I'm not sure what happens after that. It's been quite a while since I've done that, so whether or not it asks you to fill in some more details or whether it just spits out your Deacon Sync credentials there and then, I'm not sure. But this is the first step that you must do in order to access your Deacon Sync account. Once you have done that, you can close your web browser, but don't close the web browser you're watching this video in, otherwise uh, you'll have to come back to the video. So close the web browser. Okay, so once you've activated your Deacon IT account, now you can access Deacon Sync. There are a number of ways in which you can do this, but I'm going to show you the most common way that people choose to use first, before I show you my personal favourite. So what you're going to need to do is open up your web browser of choice, in my case it's Google Chrome, and simply type in Deacon to your search engine. From here you can select the top one or you can select Home Deacon or you can even jump a few steps and select Current Students and I'll show you why in a sec. But for the purpose of this video I'm just going to select the top one. Okay, so at the top of their web page you're presented with a number of options. So I want you to click Current Students. And then from this current students page, you're going to click on to log in to Deacon Sync. And then simply input your credentials and click sign on. Now, this is the longest method there is to log on into Deacon Sync. What I'm going to do is show you how to quickly set up your web browser. That way it's quick and easy for you to access Deacon Sync, you don't even need to go through the Deacon portal. Okay, so to do this, what you're going to need to do is copy this link here. So you can copy the link directly from this description of this video, or you can simply note it down as it appears on the screen here. I'm not going to have a highlight box taking you to the website because if I do that it will alter the URL so and it will bring up this jargon here and once this jargon appears it will bring up this stale request box and that's that kind of defeats the purpose of setting it up this way what we're going to need to do is just keep it minimalistic like this and that way you will be able to input your credentials once I show you how to. So, once you've copied that hyperlink that I have showed you, open up your web browser of choice, 
Now this next process may differ depending on your web browser. So for me, I'm using Google Chrome, as you already know, but if you're using Firefox or Internet Explorer, though it should be largely the same, the way that you access the ability to create home pages and whatnot may be different. But in this case, what you're going to need to do is select these three little dots up here and scroll down to settings. And then once you get here, scroll right down to the bottom of the page and then you'll see this option of on startup. And then from here, select open a specific page or set of pages. Click add a new page. And then paste in your hyperlink that I've told you to copy and then click add. Now to show you how this has worked, I'm going to close this web page and then I'm going to open up the browser again. And there you go, Deacon Sync's there, ready for you to use and ready for you to input your credentials. Now, every time you open Google Chrome or your web browser of choice, it will automatically bring up Deacon Sync. Not only does this save you time, but it just might trigger you to do that assignment you've been putting off instead of watching another random YouTube video. Except maybe this one. So, there's also another option here that I have purposely not clicked. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to show you. But it's sign on to Deacon with one click. If you do this... This allows you to sign on with the username and password already entered into the computer you're using. So this is an option you would use if it's your personal computer. You're not going to want to use this on any of the Deacon computers and any library computers because they're accessible to everyone. This is more an option if you, you know, trust your computer and you trust uh, that you're the only one using it or anyone else using your computer is not going to want to log into your Deacon Sync um, page. So I'll leave that for you to explore. Uh, and so this concludes this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to navigate Deacon Sync, uh, among a few other things.